Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Slavin Torsky and welcome to the channel. And uh, I'm pretty sure everybody's been expecting this, but I have the next video in my series for the comparisons. And this one is going to be the Shield 9 Plus versus the SIG P365. And I do have some updates for the SIG P365 that all y'all kind of caught me and told me about in the comments section of my previous video, so I'm going to go over that in here today. And but thanks for giving me a shout out on that because I've been looking in the wrong places and I made a mistake, so you guys called me on that. So, if you guys do enjoy firearms content, reviews, things like that, maybe a little bit of gaming, travel, stuff along those lines, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. There's always something new coming out, and I try my best to make sure you guys get something that you'll enjoy. And of course, if you find this entertaining, informational at all, go ahead and toss me a like, that's super appreciated. And as usual, anything you know about it, and toss it in the comments section and let me know that too. If I make a mistake, let me know. Be nice about it, don't be a jerk. <laughs> I'm going to be polite to you if you make a mistake. But let me know in the comments section if you find any cool accessories, anything like that. Toss that in the comments too. Alright, without further ado, you've seen both of these before in my videos, but I'm going to go over it all fresh in case somebody has not seen these in my videos previously. Okay? Alright, Six Hour P365 Smith & Wesson MP9 Shield Plus. So it's this one is the classic, the old school champ, versus one of the new contenders. So, you'll see right off the bat, packaging, I think the SIG is by far better. Now, full disclosure, uh, if you've seen my other comparison videos, you already know this about this. I got the SIG P365 TAC pack, and what that means is it comes with a holster, and this is just the bits to make the holster fit on your belt, and it comes with three of these 12 round magazines. Now this is the part where everybody corrected me in my last video, so I want to give everyone a shout out for that. The normal standard SIG, you can get this with two 10 round magazines. I said it came with one 12 round magazine. I was looking in the wrong spot and I was incorrect. So if you're looking for just the base model, not the tack pack, it will come with two 10 round magazines and they're going to be more flush on the bottom here. Not like this one where it comes out a little bit for your, your pinky. All right. So you're going to get, uh, we'll pretend that it's like that, but you'll get the two mags and the pistol. Like everything else, you have all your paperwork, you're locking everything down in there. Then for the Shield 9 Plus, let me get to the other side of the camera. I like these little pouches that they put them in. You're going to get the Shield 9 Plus. Plus, yes, I know I had to, a 13 round magazine and one 10 round magazine. So it gives you a little bit of a flush fit or an extended if you wanted to. So you do have options there. But as far as packaging, I definitely say the SIGS box is by far better, but not that many people care about the packaging. I'm just one of those weird people that. I don't know. I like something to come in a nice box. So, all right, I'm going to clean this off. We'll get to the next part of the video and we'll be right back. All right, so the hard part in these videos is always where to start for me. So, I think what I'm going to do is start in the most difficult part first, or the harder to explain part first, and just get it out of the way. So, I'm going to start with the magazines. Now, this is where the people corrected me in the previous uh, comparison video I had. I said that SIG, because I have the TAC pack and it comes with three 12 round magazines, I looked in a place and I was completely incorrect that I assumed it came with one 12 round magazine. I was obviously looking in the wrong place because everyone jumped on me in the comments section and corrected me, so it actually comes with two 10 round magazines for the SIG P365 if you want just the base model. So keep that in mind. Two mags. So let's pretend it's the base model, I'm going to take that extra mag out of there. We're going to pretend those are 10 rounders. The Smith comes with a 10 rounder right here, as well as, get it out of there, a 13 rounder. So you get these two different mags right here. For the SIG, now obviously this is a tack pack, so it's different. You would get two 10 rounders. So if we're going to go off capacity alone on the base model, Smith & Wesson would definitely have an advantage because they would have this 13 rounder and a 10 rounder versus two 20, 10 rounders. So 20 versus 23 rounds, if you want to do the math on it. Now let's compare the mags. So 
let's do the most accurate representation I can, and that's the 13 versus the 12. I know the 10 rounders are pretty much the same, except they're flush on the bottom here. So you'll see one has a very matte finish, and the other one has kind of a high gloss. They both have the sand grooves in the mags, so less chance of them getting hung up if any dirt or mud or anything like that gets in there. Uh, the Smith has a nice high visibility orange, Sig is black. Uh, that's more of a preference thing, I would say. Uh, you have more viewports in the Smith & Wesson than you do on the Sig, so I kind of consider that a plus myself. So, uh, let's also, since we're talking about the mags, Let's see how well they eject. A good test is to hold it upside down. Look at the pressure behind that. That mag's gonna come right out. So if I hold it this way, you have to catch it. So the SIG ejects pretty well. Let's see how the Smith ejects. We'll try both mags on the Smith just because they're two different sizes. Upside down test. Pretty good pressure. Sideways test. Comes right out. Let's try the 10 rounder. Both pretty much the same. I mean, the uh, SIG shot out a little further, but as long as it comes out enough where you can get a hold of it, or if you just hold it upside, you hold it right side up, it drops out, that's good enough in my book. So, choosing between the two mags, I would honestly lean towards Smith & Wesson just because of the higher capacity. You get the 13 rounders. And then if you compare the two magazines that are similar. The Smith & Wesson magazine is a bit larger. It sits differently. You kind of see the angle difference there. And if you needed to take it apart, this one is a little bit more difficult. It's not like most. I know I had someone get very upset at me because I didn't mention if these were sleeves or one part of the base plate in the previous video. I guess that's a big deal. So, as far as the Smith, it looks like it's two parts, and when the butt plate comes off of here, this part looks like it'll slide up and down and off. Let me know in the comments section if that works differently than I think it does. For the SIG, it's just like you'd expect. You push the button in there, you slide this forward, and this whole sleeve is held on by that base plate. So that gives you an idea of what's going on there. So yeah, if I had to choose between the two magazines, I honestly think the Smith magazines are a little bit better because you have higher capacity. So I haven't really had, well, I, I will admit I did have a issue with one of the followers in it, but that was easy enough fixed, so I'm not going to hold that against it. You can see it in my actual review video of the Smith. It was fixed, haven't had the issue since, so yeah, we'll lean towards the SIG on that. I have made my decision. <laughs> All right, so the next part, I'm going to make this a little easier on myself. We're going to go over the sights. This is definitely easier because base model on both of them would be what you see here. The SIG's base model versus the TAC pack model, the sights are not different in any way. Let's start with the Smith on here. The Smith and Wesson, you have nice, large white dots. You have your three dots set up. They are dovetailed in the front and back. It would show, help if I showed the front, wouldn't it? They are dovetailed, and it looks like the back one is screwed in. It's kind of cool. It says MMP in between there. There we go. But uh, that's about it. Very basic sights. They seem pretty durable. They're not cheap plastic sights from anything I can see. So, I don't know, not bad. Very good standard sights. Nothing special, no night sights or anything. The SIG, on the other hand, this is where SIG definitely has a huge win. You have the rear sights, are tritium, or well, I don't know if they're tritium, they're, it's the th SIGs, because I don't want to use the chemical if that's not the right chemical. So, <laughs> uh, let's see, so SIG, it's their three-day, their X-ray three-day night sights. So these ones glow in the dark on the rear, and you have that high-vis circle on the front, and the glow in the dark on the front. And actually, let me do that now. I'm going to turn off all the lights in the studio real quick. By studio, I mean my office I use for work. All right, so most of the lights are out. What I'm going to do is turn off the overhead light here 
and see if you can see the night sights. There we go, can you see them? It's kind of hard to pick up. They are small, there they go. Camera's picking them up now. But it does have some nice night sights that I assure you, they look so much clearer off a of camera because it's just, I don't know, this camera's hard to pick up night sights like that. But yeah, easily, easily, I can choose the SIG on this one when it comes to the sights. All right, so for the next portion, I want to go over the features of the two firearms. Now, uh, if anyone has seen my channel for a while, I do always get a safety of some sort on a firearm. I just prefer it that way. If It gives me an extra option in case I want to use it. So let's start with the Smith. As I was saying, I get the safety. So you have a frame mounted safety. It's small, it's not gonna get in your way, you're not gonna hit it by accident. If it's engaged and you draw it, it deactivates very easy. It's a little harder to activate than deactivate. Nice ridges on it. You have the slide catch, slide release right there. Take down lever right here. You have the magazine release right here. It's a nice button that sticks out pretty far. Has some good texturing on it. But it's not sticking out so far, it's gonna hit your thumb. See, your thumb kind of fits around it very nicely. Not complaining there. And uh, like I was saying, that texture, listen. That thing is like sandpaper. So this is gonna grip your hand very, very well if there's any sort of oil or grease or anything. I'm glad that they updated these grips. That magazine release is reversible, so you can flip it to this side if you're a lefty. So that's a nice feature. Let's see, as far as this, there is no rail up front. It looks like it, they kind of made a fake rail, or a faux rail as some people would say. Is that how you pronounce it, faux, F-A-U-X? So uh, no rail there, no ridges on the front of the trigger guard. There are some sort of slide serrations on the front if you want to press check. It's not that easy with just those minimals. I would just assume grab it by the rear. Now, I do like these fish scale serrations. These look really good, kind of wavy, like you would see on some, uh, I don't know, like some old paintings. I do like those. Back plate's nice and textured, gives it a little different look. The serrations are on both sides, of course. And you do have a chamber loaded indicator. If you look peek in this hole, you will see brass if you have a bullet in there. So kind of a cool feature. As far as the trigger, there is a trigger blade safety. We'll go over the trigger a little bit later. But that's really it as far as the features. So, you know, decent gun, very standard. Very standard for Smith especially. So let's switch, get on there. <laughs> let's go over to the SIG. All right, so we're gonna start around the same place. Oh, I almost forgot to mention the trigger guard, since I was looking at that. There is a nice groove. It would help if I put it on the camera, wouldn't it? A nice groove in the trigger guard. So your hand slips right in there. I like it when they put those little grooves for your finger. Much, much more comfortable to shoot and hold. Okay, back to the SIG. So, frame mounted safety. The difference in this safety is the firearm has to be charged in order for the safety to be activated. And the safety is ambidextrous on this one, whereas the Smith, it's only on the, the left side of the pistol. All right, so the grips also, if you listen, nice sandpaper. It's not as fine. It's more of a coarse sandpaper. Also very grippy. This is not going to come out of your hand if there's blood or uh, mud or anything like that or puke <laughs> on your hands. Nice cutout on the bottom of the trigger guard. I like that. No serrations. The magazine release is triangled out, so that's kind of cool looking. You'll see it's kind of curved as well to fit the frame of the gun. It sticks out well enough, but not enough for your hand to really get to it. And I have large hands. I like the indentations for your thumbs here and your trigger finger on this side. The magazine release is reversible, so if you're a lefty, you can toss it over here. You do have a proprietary rail, and what that means is that's not a Picatinny rail, that's a rail specifically for this firearm. Think uh, HK USP, they have their own proprietary rail also, so it gives you an idea what it is. 
I've looked up the lights and lasers for this. They actually look really cool attached to this gun. It fits it very nicely. Same aesthetic. Very pleasing to the eye. <laughs> uh, let's see. You also have the hole in top. The uh, loaded chamber indicator. Look in here for brass. Now on this one, the front serrations, the serrations in general on this pistol are very, very nice. They're deep. You can really feel them, but they're not, they're not sharp on the edges, so you're not going to tear your hand up. It's not going to cut you. You can do press checks. You can grab from the rear very easily. You have a very kind of a matte back plate. Nothing special there. Both of them have a nice curve on the back here where it goes right into the webbing of your hand. I didn't show that in the Smith, so I'll, just to be fair, I will. They both fit very nicely in your hand right there. But uh, there is no trigger blade safety on this one. So that's kind of a little bit of a difference there. So as far as features go, I'm probably going to lean towards the SIG on this one. It does have some, I'd say a, a little bit bigger amount of features, but it also the serrations on the slide are a huge deal for me. If I can't grip that, I mean, just if you really want a true test of this, pour something on your hand that's like, I don't know, engine oil or put a bunch of oil for cleaning your gun on your hand and then try to rack the slide a bunch. If it slips out of your hand at all, you know you're having issues. You're not gonna have that with this, but this one, yeah, a little bit, those serrations, while they look really nice, they're not quite so deep, so they're harder to grab. So that's a big deal for me. I like that the safety's on both sides, it's ambi. I'm not terribly big on trigger safeties, so to me, or trigger blade safeties, so to me that doesn't mean, that's not a big deal. And of course, another big, big advantage, this one actually has a rail of some sort, whereas the Smith does not have a rail. So I'm gonna lean towards the SIG P365 on this one. All right, so in this portion, I'm gonna go over accessories. To me, this is gonna be a wash because the SIG P365 has been out forever. Well, not forever, but it's been out for a few years. There's a ton of accessories for it. And while the Shield 9 Plus just came out, I found out in the comments section in my previous videos that there's a ton of accessories out that fit this. And apparently, from what I've seen in the comments and what you guys have told me, is that, because I haven't been able to confirm this yet, a lot of people in the comments were telling me that the Shield 9's uh, lasers and things that fit on the front here, the lights, a lot of the accessories and holsters will fit this that fit the Shield 9. So Shield 9 Plus will fit Shield 9 holsters, lasers, and so on from what you guys have told me. I haven't been able to confirm that myself, but I'm trusting you guys on that one. So that's really cool. So that being the case, that's a wash for me, man. These both have a ton of accessories. Just go nuts and customize these things out. All right, next up, let us take a look at how these take down. So if you want to get inside to clean it, field strip. This is a big thing for me. If I can't, if I need an extra tool to field strip a firearm, I'm probably not going to like that firearm. Even if I love everything else about it, if that is the case, I'm not going to like it. So starting with the P SIG P365, and we'll show the whole thing in my review for this pistol, but I'm just going to show a quick one for here. Sorry, I swear to God, every time I'm in here reviewing, it sounds like something falls down. All right, so first step, you lock it back. You rotate down that lever. You let go of the lock. That's it. Comes right off. Super simple, super easy. I love that. Now, the cool thing about this one is after you do that, you go to lock it again. Oh, let me do that. When you lock it, it automatically rotates that up. That's pretty cool. Saves you, I don't know, a quarter of a second. <laughs> You know what I mean though, I like little little features like that that are kind of hidden. So for the Smith, also, same thing, lock it back. As always with all these firearms, I realize I didn't show it yet, no magazine, no round in the chamber, stay safe, okay? So you lock it back, you'll see this kind of half groove here. You're gonna rotate that sucker down. Full disclosure, this is a brand new pistol, so that sucker is hard to move. Rotate that down. Unlock it, pull the trigger, comes off. So you do have to pull the trigger in order for that to come off of there, mainly because you have to lock it back. If it was like some guns where you can just pull it back slightly, you wouldn't have to do that, but 
in this case you do. So rotate that back, back together, good to go. No issues there. So that's a pretty standard takedown and it's not one of the more rough ones that we've all seen. So, I don't know, they're both pretty similar. If I had to give it to either one, I'd probably give the SIG just because that cool little feature, when you lock it, it automatically uh, rotates around the um, dead brain, dead brain, the uh, takedown lever. Yes, takedown lever. My God, brain does not like me sometimes. So, I'd probably go to it for that, but honestly, they're pretty much the same. All right, it's trigger time, baby. So, let's go ahead and test these triggers. <laughs> We're gonna start with the Smith on this one. I'm going to come to the right side of the camera. Let's try that trigger. Make sure you get that trigger blade disengaged. So here you hit a wall, clean break, reset. Resets right on the brake, and you're back to shooting again. So that's a really good trigger, actually. I like that. Now, as I've said in previous videos, I'm not the best judge of triggers. I can't pull a trigger and tell you how, what the poundage is. I can just tell you if it's easy or not. Uh, I compare them to how far you have to pull the trigger for it to go off, as well as the reset, and how spongy it is. Those are the things that are important to me. So for the SIG, let's test that trigger. You come up to here, you hit a soft wall, and then it breaks. Reset. It resets at the beginning of the soft wall, and then it breaks. So let me show you the soft wall again. So you hit right here, a little bit further, and then it breaks. Reset. A little bit before the wall on there. So let's see if I can do these side by side. It's not easy to do, but the more I practice it, the better I'll get. Who knows, maybe one day I'll combo some guns. All right, so Smith & Wesson in my left, Sig in my right. Let's do these triggers side by side. And I'm trying to get my thumbs out of the way. All right, come to here, hit the wall hit the wall. So there's a little bit more take up it seems in the SIG. Alright, pull up the wall. See that? Let's try it again. Keep in mind my left hand is slower. I'm a righty. Alright, so wall, wall, take up, instant break. I don't know guys. Looks to me like the Smith & Wesson trigger is a bit better. At least it feels better in my hands. So if I was gonna go based off trigger, I think the Smith has a better trigger to be honest with you. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> All right, so like I said earlier in the video, uh, what I'm gonna do now is change up the format a little bit from what I've done previously. And uh, it's just because of what I've learned from the previous videos, people in the comments sections kind of teaching me up on things. So I'll change it up a little bit to kind of get everything down and correct here for everybody. All right, so what I did is I pulled up the SIG P365 on their, their website, Smith & Wesson's Shield 9 on their website. And I also have, because this is the pricing portion, I also have PSA, grab a gun, and classic firearms and buds that I want to compare these on so we can kind of have an idea of what we're looking at here. Uh, from what I've seen, these are kind of four of the biggest ones that kind of everybody use for shopping. I know I have two, so let's start off with the SIG. So here's a few different options for it. All right, so these are the options directly on the website. So this is the P365X, this is their new one. There is the XL. That one's been around for a while. So basically it looks like the X, they just took off the L portion here uh, based off what people have been wanting. So from what I can tell, it looks like they just added the rear sight as, let's click in there. Why am I not clicking that? All right, so it looks like it replaces the rear sight so you can actually put your optic on the firearm. Some people might want that. I prefer to have a standard rear sight. But let's continue on. 
before I get too sidetracked as always, there's the XL. That's the SAS, the one that has no sights other than that back one that fits in the frame. Cool looking gun, just not my thing. Then there is the standard P365XL, that one does not come with the optic, the Romeo Zero, but the plate has the rear sights on it. So that makes me wonder if that has the plate with the rear sights on it too. It should. I'll go back in there and double check. Then the standard version, which is basically what I have. Alright, so let's go back in and see if that does include the optic mount. Now I'm curious. Alright, these do come with two 12 round steel mags for this version. Uh, let's see, grip module, yada yada. It does not say here. There's how it looks from the rear, so when you're co-witnessing. Uh, let's see, uh, nitro side, da, 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 two 12 round mags. Alright, so it doesn't say about if the plate comes with the rear sights. I imagine it does. That wouldn't make any sense for them to send it without it. Now let's go back in here. Something else they learned me up on on the previous video. You have three different versions. I have been looking at the wrong place. So what I learned from the previous video in the comments section, everybody kind of corrected me on this in my last video. I said that it when I took away from the TAC plat tech pack it only came with one magazine that was from a website that I'd looked at that I shop from a lot my guess is that that website either has some weird offer going on or they're taking away mags and selling something the way they shouldn't be but I was corrected on this so these do come standard with two 10 round magazines normally and that's whichever model you go with here but that's the standard model that's basically what I have except the tack pack version with the manual safety all right I've spent enough time on here so we have an idea what we're looking at. So let's go to what the pricing could possibly be. PSA, uh, this is an idea of what you can look at as far as current pricing. Today is March 23rd. I'm filming this portion of the video. Sometimes I film different parts of the video at different times. So XL, we're looking at 650. Another version of it for seven. And then you have a bunch that are not in stock. Attack pack. But you get an idea on there. I'm not encouraging anyone to buy these, by the way, because I know YouTube doesn't like that. We're just looking. Okay. Next up, grab a gun. This is what you're looking at here. The flat dark earth is a little too orangey, I guess you could say, for my tastes. But we're looking at some pricing here and here. That's the SAS again, I'm not a fan of that. There's the XL pricing. So we're looking at anywhere from six to 660 and up. If you want the optic with it, you're looking at 830, seven for the XL. I must admit, I am kind of liking that stainless, but no, no, stay away. You shouldn't get stainless all the time. <laughs> I say that, but I absolutely love stainless and it is a good finish. So that gives you an idea what we're looking at in a grab a gun. Uh, classic, everything is out of stock. There's no pricing, but again, you have an idea what's on there. A lot of different options and listings. And for some reason they tossed the 226 on there, even though I narrowed down the search. All right, so buds, here's the standard for six bills. XL for 625, not bad. SAS 676 so on and so forth and of course they added some other things on here that aren't this P365 there's the XL okay so you get the idea all right so let's move on to Smith & Wesson all right so this is what I was talking about in the comments section of my previous video the shield series there are three different models you have the standard shield which we've all known and loved for a while the Shield Plus and then the Shield Plus Performance Center, which just released. So price is anywhere from 553 to 623. Here's how we can kind of play with it. So you can choose 10 round or 10 plus one. The 10 round only comes with white dot sights and you can do no thumb safety or manual thumb safety. Apparently that doesn't change the image. 
So if you do the one that has the extra magazine, you can either do white dot sights and no thumb safety or manual thumb safety. Oh, that one actually does have the image different. Then you have the night sights up top. Kind of see the difference there. And apparently that one only comes in the no thumb safety model. So if you have an idea of what we're looking at there and the pricing, how it changes depending. 553 for white dot, 623 for night sights. Now let's check out that performance center. All right, so let's just go with the base model. No optics, uh, no thumb safety, and apparently no features. That's just the base model, how it looks. So you're looking at about 630 for that. If you want to go optics ready, you cannot put a thumb safety on that. You can either do it, no features, 896 if you want the ported barrel and slide then it's going to go up to almost a grand. So you kind of have an idea of the big difference in pricing here. All right. And hopefully I like, everybody likes this kind of portion. I decided to do this so it's a little more in depth and it kind of helps people along a little bit. If you have any different suggestions, let me know. So back to PSA, just found the uh, standard version, 550. It's kind of what we expected. Thumb safety or no thumb safety. Uh, then on to grab a gun, 550. Everything's pretty fair in the pricing. Uh, here we have the performance center, the basic model for 650. Now what's interesting here, here's the performance center in the shorter barrel instead of the long barrel. They don't even have that showing on their own website. Interesting, isn't it? But that's 650. Here's the full one with all the sprinkles on top. They want 910. 920, 950 for more sprinkles. So it gives you an idea what you're looking at there. On to Classic. Everything's out of stock because <laughs> Classic's always out of stock. But you see them there. And for Buds, same thing, 550. And you have all the different models. So just thought I'd kind of go through here, give you an idea what price we're looking at. From what I can tell, you could find some deals on the SIG as low as six but the shield looks like it goes anywhere from 550 and up so it looks like the shield has a bit of an advantage on the sig when it comes to having a lower price point all right so we're at the portion of the video where we're going to weigh both firearms against each other uh, i am not going to weigh them loaded if you want to see what they weigh with the ammunition in them uh, each one of their separate reviews does have that but I'm just going to weigh both pistols against each other unloaded so you kind of have an idea what you're looking for. So just for giggles, I am going to weigh the empty magazines. Now this is a 12 rounder. I don't have a 10 rounder. So that's two and a half ounces for, uh, for the SIG. Now for the Smith & Wesson, the 10 rounder is 2.1 ounces. The 13 rounder is 2.6 ounces. All right, so let's get to the firearms themselves. Completely unloaded, Smith & Wesson Shield 9 Plus. One pound, 2.2 ounces. The SIG P365. One pound, 0.6 ounces. Let's do that again. One pound, 2.2. One pound, 0.6 ounces. So the SIG is actually a bit lighter. So that's the way you have an idea if you want to carry it on you, exactly what kind of weight is going to be on your body while you're CCW. All right, so I want to just put these next to each other side by side so you have an idea of what you're looking at. So that's how they both look, at, look from the rear. As you can see, the Smith is a fair amount taller. Well, it is sort of. The very tip here makes the SIG as tall. Well, almost as tall. There you get an idea. Uh, here's how they look from the top. The Smith & Wesson's a little bit longer. Let me do that so they're actually both on camera. There you go, that's both of them next to each other. If you want to see them upside down. 
that's how they both look like that. You see the Smith is a little bit taller from the bottom. My hands aren't the steadiest in the world. So that gives you an idea there. And then laying on each other. This is what they look like from that comparison. Oops, I'm trying not to grind them against each other. That gives you an idea there. And you can't even see the SIG on the other side of the Smith except for the trigger guard here. So it gives you an idea of them side by side. Yeah, and I'm scratching it up a little bit. That's okay though. That'll buff out. So that gives you an idea of what they look right next to each other. What you're looking at between the two. Pretty cool. I like both of them. I think they're sweet firearms in their own separate ways. Let me adjust the camera a little. But here comes the hard part in every video. If I could only choose one. As usual, it's a tough choice for me because I love all my firearms. But, all right, if I'm going off, if I'm just going to go off sheer capacity alone, I'll go with the Smith. If I'm going to go off the better trigger, I'm going to go with the Smith. If I'm going to go off the sights, I'm going to go with the SIG, the P365. I love the sights on that. Uh, the ergonomics. In my opinion, the SIG has better ergonomics. This one is pretty straight. It's very gravelly. This one, I like the grooves. It's a little bit rotated around more. The ergonomics on the SIG, even here on the sides, are a little bit better to me, so I like that. Uh, the SIG has a rail, whereas the Smith & Wesson does not. It has an ambidextrous safety where the Smith doesn't, but a lot of you don't like manual safeties, so that's kind of a wash for some people. Uh, as far as the finish, uh, someone told me in one of the comment section that uh, they actually Cerakote the bottom to match the top. I don't know if that's true or not. I generally don't talk about finishes because I don't know enough about them. But uh, this is more of a matte finish on the SIG, more of a glossy finish on the Smith. I can't really... To me, it finishes a finish. Is it black? Is it stainless steel? I know that some are rusty and some are not. But to, again, to me, I don't know enough about them, so I'm not going to make much of an opinion there. Just being 100% straight up with you on that. Uh, now, uh, for concealed carry, honestly, the SIG's going to be easier because it is smaller than the Smith & Wesson. So, I would say, alright, for me personally, I'll just give you the answer out of the way and I'll quit kind of building up the suspense here. Out of the two, I would choose the SIG. That's me personally, now let me explain why. I have a lot of firearms. I like to have firearms for every little thing. This one would be a designated concealed carry option for me. I carry an HK P30SK right now. It's pretty large compared to this. Actually, let me grab it real quick. Sorry, just kind of an idea that popped in my head last minute. This is what I carry. So if I was to put that up against that, that SIG is a fair amount smaller. The Smith & Wesson is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit thinner. But as far as the SIG, it's super small. I could pocket carry this. I live in Florida. You wear board shorts or uh, kayaking pants, whatever. I don't know, swim trunks. It's easier to carry something like this, and it's lighter. So for me, that's personally what I would go for. Now, if you're on a budget, and there's, from what I could see, a $50 difference between the two. To me, the sites alone are worth 50 bucks, but I'm going off topic again. If you're looking for one firearm to be your concealed carry gun, your bedside gun, your truck gun, the one you keep with you, the one you throw in your bag, the one you take to the range, the only gun that you want to have. You don't want to own any other ones, you just want one and done. Go with the Smith. It's going to be a little bit better target. You got a target pistol, you got a better trigger on it. Um, it's probably going to suit your needs very, very well and you'll save a little bit of cash. But if you do have multiple firearms and you want something specific for concealed carry, go with the SIG. That's the one I would personally choose out of the two of them. Again, 
you see how I'm having to kind of justify this? It's not easy for me. I love both of these firearms. I love this firearm. <laughs> so it's not an easy choice. But again, in the end, I would choose the SIG over the Smith. Hopefully I didn't upset too many people with that. But let me know what you think down in the comments section. SIG or Smith, which would you choose? The Shield 9 Plus or the P365? Both are amazing options. Don't get me wrong. You can buy all the accessories you want, cool stuff. But I wanna hear what you guys think down in the comments section. Which do you prefer, which do you like more? Let's talk about that and get a discussion going. The talks on these, uh, these videos have been going really well. I'm enjoying them quite a bit. So this is good, and I'm learning myself, so this is productive to me as well. I'm enjoying this. So uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Let's talk about these, talk about accessories. Which do you like more? And if you're wondering where the Ruger 9 Max video is, go back a little bit of my videos. You'll see it in there. I have it compared to both of these. And in the next video coming up, I am adding a new contender to the three of these. And then you can expect some comparisons between those as well. So look forward to that coming, guys. I, I'm trying to keep a, a steady amount of content that I think people could actually find really useful coming out. All right? So that's it for today. That's my choice. I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> but uh, stay safe. Keep your family safe. Take it easy. And like I always say, stay on your goals. Stay on target. Even if you miss, you can always shoot again. Reload if you have to. Keep going for your goals. Don't ever give up. The minute you give up, that's when they win. Who is they? Whoever's against you. The universe that you think might not like you, the person across the street that gives you that mean mug, whoever. Make sure you're staying on target for yourself. Who cares about those other people, the universe, that guy across the street that mean mugs you? No, that's not me, I promise. <clears throat> but <laughs> you get an idea what I'm talking about. Just stay on target, guys, and you will get there eventually. And once you meet your goal, what do you do next? Set a new goal. Find a new target. Keep on pushing. That's all you got to do. But, uh, yep, that's it for today. I will talk to you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments section. Give it a like if you think it deserved it. Subscribe if you want to see more. If you think there's a buddy of yours that wants to see this, go ahead and share it with them. It's cool stuff. But uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. Take it easy. And until the next video, I'll see you then.